From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Aileen McMahon and Estelle Winwood in The Mad Woman of Shiloh. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Our play this evening was inaccurately titled by its author, the late Jean Giraudoux. He called it, and we call it, The Mad Woman of Chaillot. Well, to be accurate, it should be called uh, The Mad Women. Aline McMahon, who was in the title role in the Los Angeles production, is going to act for you the crazy old lady of the Chaillot district in Paris. She has three lunatic friends. One of them is the Mad Woman of Passy. And she will be played by Estelle Winwood, who is unforgettable in this role in the Broadway production of this comic fantasy in 1948. And then we also shall meet the Mad Woman of Saint Sulpice, to be played by Agnes Young, and the Mad Woman of La Concorde, in the person of Irene Hubbard. Among their strange playmates, we shall find the Sewer Man, who leads a fascinating life below ground. And he will be acted by the original Sewer Man, James Westerfield. I've never been able to decide which is my favorite character in this play, because they all are wonderful and unusual. Let's start now, so you may decide for yourselves. In the stately quarter of Paris known as Chaillot, between the Champs-Élysées and the Seine, Across the river from the Apple Tower is a cafe called Le Chez Francis. The time is a little before noon in the spring of next year. And on the cafe terrace, two businessmen who have made an agreement are congratulating each other. Ah, here we are. Chez Francis. <laughs> Baron, this is an historic occasion and it must be celebrated properly. Splendid. Your name is precisely the name we need on our board of directors. Now tell me about yourself, Baron. Well, my life has been relatively uncomplicated. It has consisted mostly of selling off, one by one, the various estates left me by my father. And you, Mr. President? Ah, mine has been a very different experience. I came up from the bottom. My mother spent most of her life bent over a washtub in order to send me to school. I am eternally grateful to her, of course. But I must confess that I no longer remember her face. Very touching. Now I am president of 11 corporations, director of 52 companies, and beginning today, chairman of the board of the International Combine, on which you have been so good as to accept a post. Excuse me, Mr. President. You looking for something, Ragpicker? Did you drop this? I never drop anything. Oh, then this hundred franc note isn't yours? Uh... Give it here. Go away. Oh. Are you sure it's yours? All hundred franc notes are mine, Baron. Indeed. Uh, Mr. President, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. What exactly is the purpose of our new company? My dear sir, I haven't the faintest idea. Huh? But if you don't know, who does? Nobody. And at the moment, it's becoming a trifle embarrassing. Yes, my dear Baron, since we are now close business associates, I must confess that for the time being, we are in a little trouble. Ah, I was afraid of that. The stock issue isn't going so well. Oh, no, 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 quite the contrary. The stock issue is going beautifully. The trouble is, we have a tremendous capital and not the slightest idea what to do with it. And then, too, we need a name. A name. Something to set the brain a whirl. United General International Consolidated. Of course, that's been used before, but that's what a corporation needs. And so far, we have only a blank space. Exactly. Only a blank... My dear Baron, yes. look at the face of that man over there. The answer to a prayer. You call that a face? 
<laughs> looks more like a tombstone. It's a milestone. It's a signpost. Ah, he sees me. He'll be over. And when he comes... He will tell me what to do. You mean business is done this way? You would trust a stranger with a matter of importance? Baron, although we have never laid eyes upon each other before, that man and I know each other to the very depth of our souls. How do you do, sir? Well? I need a name. I need 50,000 cash. A name for a corporation. International Substrates of Paris, Incorporated. Excellent. That's it. Now, what does it mean? It means what it says. I'm a prospector. A prospector? Well, allow me to shake your hand. Baron, you're in the presence of one of nature's noblemen. Shake his hand. This is Baron Tomar. How do you do? Well, now that we have a name... You need a property. Precisely. I have one. Here in Paris. In Paris? You've been prospecting in Paris? For what? Oil. Oil in Paris? How is that possible? It is not only possible, it's certain. You don't know, my dear sir, what treasures Paris conceals. Paris is the least prospected place in the world. Who has ever thought of looking for oil in Paris? Nobody. Before me, that is. Genius! Why has nobody ever thought of this before? The treasures of the earth, my dear sir, are not easy to find nor get at. A prospector has many problems. I know. Snakes, tarantulas, fleas. Worse than that, sir. Civilization. And uh, that annoys you? Civilization gets in our way all the time. In the first place, it covers the earth with cities and towns, which are awkward to dig up when you want to see what's underneath. It's not only the real estate people. You can do business with them. It's human sentimentality. How do you do business with that? I see what you mean. But what's the use of arguing with sentimental fools? Imagine the choicest place you ever saw for an excavation. And what do they put there? A playground for children. Just show us the point where you want to start, start digging. We'll do the rest, even if it's in the middle of the Louvre. Where is the oil? Beneath this very spot. Right under here? Exactly. And so here I am, with the greatest discovery of the age on my hands. But the blasted authorities won't let me drill a single well unless I show them the oil. Now, how can I show them the oil unless they let me dig? Shall I tell you my plan? Please. What I propose is... In heaven's name, what is that? I gather it's a female. But I've never seen such a costume. Irma! Irma! Yes, Countess? Are my bones ready, Irma? There won't be much today, Countess. We had broilers. Can you wait while the gentleman inside finishes eating? And my gizzard? I'll try to get it away from him. Well, if he eats my gizzard, save me the giblets. <laughs> they will do for the tomcat that lives under the bridge. <laughs> He likes a few giblets now and again. Yes, Countess. I'll bring them right out. This is preposterous. I'll have her removed. Waiter, waiter. I'm coming, sir. Uh, what will you have? Waiter, ask that woman to move on. Uh, sorry, sir. This is her cafe. She is the manager of this cafe? She is the mad woman of Chaillot. Good heavens, a mad woman roaming the streets. We must do something. Marcel. Oh, yes, Countess. Have you found it, my feather boa? Not yet, Countess. Three scarves, but no boa. It's five years since I lost it. Now, surely you've had time to find it. Boa like that doesn't just vanish, you know. A feather boa, nine feet long. Waiter, I'm making a complaint. Against who? Against sir? her, that lunatic female, or whatever you call now, her. Now, now, calm yourself, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. We were discussing my plan. Oh, yes, 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 your plan. But be careful. She's looking at us. Do you know what a bomb is? Ah, uh, I'm told they explode. Exactly. You see that white building across the river? It's the office of the city architect. That man has stubbornly refused to give me a permit to drill for oil. I've tried everything with him. Influence, bribes, threats. He says I'm crazy. But now... Good heavens, another lunatic. Well, who are you and what are you trying to sell us? Nothing but health, sir. Or rather, the health of the feet. May I present myself? Dr. Gaspard Jardin, French Navy, retired. Former specialist in the extraction of ticks and jiggers. 
At present specialising in the extraction of bunions and corns. In case of sudden emergency, Marshall, the waiter, will furnish my home address. Thank you very much. How are your gallstones today, Marshall? Oh, fine, Doctor. They rattle like anything. Splendid. Good morning, Countess. How's the floating kidney? Still afloat, thank you. <laughs> good, good. As long as it floats. It can't sink. <laughs> Gentlemen, okay. this is impossible. Let's go somewhere else. No, no. It must be nearly noon. It's five minutes to twelve. In five minutes' time, you're going to see that city architect blown up. Building and all. Boom! Are you serious? The imbecile has no one to blame but himself. Yesterday noon, he got my ultimatum. He's had 24 hours to think it over. No permit? All right, I'm sorry. Within two minutes, my agent is going to drop a little package in his coal bin. And three minutes after that... Boom. Boom. You prospectors certainly use modern methods. I guarantee that after this, the city architect will be more reasonable. The new one, I mean. Ah, it's noon. Why, something's wrong. Good heavens... What's this? That officer there. The man he's carrying over his shoulder is my agent. What's over that there? you've got, officer? Drowned man. Take him off my shoulder. Careful there. Well, he's not drowned. His clothes are dry. He's been slugged. Slugged is also correct. He was jumping off the bridge when I came along and I pulled him back. I slugged him naturally so he wouldn't drag me under. Stupid idiot. That's what comes of employing amateurs. But what did he do with the bomb? You don't think he'll give you away? Don't worry. Um, officer, what do you think you're doing? Life-saving. Artificial respiration. First aid to the drowning. But he's not drowning. He thinks he is. You'll never bring him around that way. That is meant for people who drown in water. It's no good at all for those who drown without water. What am I supposed to do? I've just been sworn in. It's my first day on the beat. I can't afford to get in trouble. Perfectly simple. Take him back to the bridge where you found him and throw him in. Then you can save his life and you'll get a medal. But I don't swim. You can learn how on the way down. Now, quickly, before anybody notices, take him back. All right, here we stop, go. Stop, 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 officer. You will leave the young man exactly where he is. But, madame... Leave him. I think I should like to hold his hand a little while. What are we going to do? I think we'd better all run along and discuss what to do next somewhere else. Yes, let's do that. There's another cafe along this way where we can talk. Emma, Emma. Yes, Carl. Come, come here, come here. Bring your pocket mirror. Oh, how handsome he is. Is he dead, Carl? Well, now, hold the mirror to his mouth. If it clouds over... Oh, it does cloud over. He's alive, then. Oh. oh look, he's opened his eyes. Young man, you're looking at my iris. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, very. Oh, the sergeant was good enough to say that it becomes me. I had to tell him quite frankly that I no longer trust his taste. Yesterday the flower girl gave me a lily, and he said it didn't suit me. It's beautiful. Oh, well, he'll be very happy to know that you agree with him. He's really quite sensitive. <laughs> Sergeant! Oh, no, no, no. Please, don't call the oh, police. Oh, but I must. I think I hurt his feelings. Let me go, madame. I'll do nothing of the sort. When you let someone go, you never see him again. I let Charlotte Mezume go. And I never saw her again. Oh, my head. And I let Adolphe Berthaud go. And I never saw him again. <laughs> Except once, 30 years later in the market. Oh, he had changed a great deal. He didn't know me. <laughs> He sneaked a melon from right under my nose. The only good one of the year. Oh, oh here we are, Sergeant. I'm in a hurry, Countess. Now, uh, with regard to the iris, this young man agrees with you. He says it suits me. Well, I must go. There's a man drowning in the sea. No, 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 he's not. He's drowning here. What? No, no, you, you needn't hurry because I'm holding him tight, uh -oh. as I should have held Adolphe Berthaud. Oh, but if I let him go, I'm sure he'll go and drown in the Seine. No. Sergeant. Now, what are you doing? I'm taking down the drowned man's name and date of birth. You think that's going to stop him from jumping in the river to tell him the date of his birth? Well, I'm not going to tell him. He's going to tell me. Well, I wouldn't tell you mine. Oh, don't be silly, Sergeant. Put that book away now and console him. When people want to die, it is your job to speak out in praise of life. I should speak out in praise of life? Well, if you believe that life has some value, tell him so. Well, as guardian of the state, surely you must have some idea of the value of life. You're right, Countess. 
Now look, young fellow. His name is Roderick. My name is not Roderick. Yes, it is. At noon, all men are called Roderick. Except Adolphe Berthaud. Now, we're not here to discuss Adolphe Berthaud, Sergeant. You're here to convince this young man that life is worth living. It isn't. Quiet. But it now isn't. Now then, what was the idea of jumping off the bridge anyhow? Well, the idea was to land in the river. Roderick doesn't seem to be at all confused about that. Now, oh, how can I convince anybody that life is worth living if you keep interrupting all the oh, time? I'll be quiet. Now, first of all, Mr. Roderick, you have to realize that suicide is a crime against the state. <laughs> Every time anybody commits suicide, that mm -hmm. means one soldier less for the army. One taxpayer less Sergeant, for the... Sergeant, are you a lover of life or a tax collector? Now, surely in all these years, you must have found something to make life worth living. Well... Fact is, since you ask me, I love to play casino. And if the gentleman would like to join me when he wants to kill an hour... No, he doesn't want to kill an hour. He wants to kill himself. Well, Sergeant, I defy anybody to stop dying on your account. Well, go ahead. Do you think you can do better? Why, this isn't a difficult case at all. In the first place, why should he want to die when he has just this minute fallen in love with Irma? And Irma has fallen in love with with him. Oh, she hasn't. How could she? Oh, yes, she has. She was holding your hand just as I'm holding it now. Roderick, I know very well why you were in such a hurry to drown yourself. You don't at all. Yes, it's because that prospector wanted you to commit a horrible crime. Madame, how do you know that? Well, he stole my boa. Now he wants you to kill me. Well, not exactly. Well, it wouldn't be the first time they've tried it. I'm not so easy to get rid of, my boy. Because I have no desire to die. You're fortunate. Well, to be alive is to be fortunate, Roderick. <laughs> of course, in the morning, when first you awake, it doesn't always seem so very gay. When you take your hair out of the drawer and your teeth out of the glass, you're quite likely to feel a little out of place <laughs> in this naughty world. Particularly if you've just been dreaming that you're a little girl on a pony looking for strawberries in the woods. But... All you need in order to feel the call of life again is a letter in the mail giving you your schedule for the day. Now, you write it to yourself the day before. That's the safest. Now, here are my assignments for this morning. Uh, to mend my petticoats with red thread, to curl my ostrich feather, or to write to my grandmother, etc., etc. Et then, when I've washed my face with rose water and powdered it with a cake of pure white starch, and I've put on my pins and rings, my brooches, my pearls, my bracelets and earrings, in short. When I'm dressed for my coffee and I've had a good look at myself, oh, not in the mirror, naturally. No, no, it lies, but in the side of the brass gong that belonged to Admiral Courbet. <laughs> then, Roderick, I'm armed, I'm strong, I'm ready to begin again. Oh, madame, madame. Well, after that, everything is pure delight. First, the morning paper. Now, not, of course, these current sheets full of lies and vulgarity. No, no, I always read the Gaulois. The issue of March the 22nd, 1903. It's far the best. It has some delightful scandal, some excellent fashion notes. And, of course, the last-minute bulletin on the death of Leonid Leblanc. Now, she used to live next door, poor woman. When I learn of her death every morning, well, it, it gives me quite a shock. I gladly lend you my copy, but it's in tatters. Couldn't we find him a copy in some library, maybe? <laughs> I doubt it. Go on, madame, go on. Well, then, when you've taken your fruit salts, now, not in water, naturally. No matter what they say, it's water gives you gas. But with a bit of spiced cake, hmm? and you put on your rings and your earrings and your pearls. Then, Roderick, then in sunlight or rain, Shio calls, and it's time to dress. For your morning walk. Well, well, this takes much longer, of course. Without a maid, it's absolutely impossible to do that all under an hour. What with your corset, your corset cover, and your drawers, all of which lace a button in the back. Now, I, I asked Madame Lanvin a little while ago to fit those drawers with zippers. Well, she was quite charming, but she declined. No, she, she thought it would spoil the style. I know a place where they put zippers on anything. Oh, I think Lanvin knows best, but uh, I really manage quite well. Now, what I do now is I, I lace them up the front and then I twist them around to the back. It's quite simple, really. Uh, th then you choose a lorgnette, and then comes the usual fruitless search for the feather boa that your prospector stole. I know it was he. He didn't dare look me in the eye. Then, then all you need is a rubber band to slip around your parasol. Uh, 
I lost the catch. The day I struck the cat that was stalking the pigeon. <laughs> it was worth it. I earned my wages that day. Countess, if you can use it, I found a nice umbrella catch the other day. Oh, Mr. Ragpicker, I didn't see you come. If you would like the umbrella catch, Countess, it has a cat's eye in oh, it. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Ragpicker. They say those eyes sometimes come to life. And they fill with tears. Ah. I, I'd be afraid. Go on, madame, go on. Oh, so life's beginning to interest you, is it? You see how beautiful it is. I, I've been a fool. Tell me, what do you do then? Then, Roderick, then I begin my rounds. Well, I have my cats to feed, my dogs to pet, and my plants to water. And I have to see what the evil ones are up to in the district. Those who hate animals, those who hate flowers, those who hate people. I watch them sneaking off in the morning to put on their disguises to the bath. To the beauty palace, to the barbers. And when they come out again with their blonde hair and their false whiskers to pull up my flowers and poison my dogs, they can't fool me. I'm there and I'm ready. <laughs> All you have to do to break their power is to cut across their path from the left. Well, that isn't always easy. I move swiftly, but I have a good long stride and I generally manage. Don't I, Mr. Ragpicker? Oh, yes, Countess. The flowers have been marvelous this oh, year. Oh, and the butcher's dog on the Rue Bizet, in spite of that wretch who tried to poison him, isn't he friskier than ever? <laughs> <laughs> that dog had better watch out. He has no license. He doesn't seem to feel the need for one. The Duchesse de la Rochefoucauld's whippet is getting awfully thin. Oh, what can I do? Now, now, she bought that dog, full-grown, from a kennel where they didn't even know his right name. Well, a dog without his right name is just bound to get thin. I've got a friend who knows a lot about dogs in Arab. Oh, ask him to call on the Duchess. She receives Thursdays from five to seven. You see, Roderick, that's life. Now, how does it seem to you now? It it seems marvelous. Oh, that's only the morning. Oh, wait till I tell you about the afternoon. Now, in the afternoon... No, 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 I'll have to tell you later. I, I don't want him to hear. Who? The one who's coming there. Huh? All right, dear, come along with me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly all right here. I said come along now. I'd better go, madame. No. It's no use. Please let go my you hand. Stay where you are now. I'm holding your hand because I shall need your arm in a few minutes to take me home. I am very easily frightened. Madame, will you oblige me by letting my friend go? I will not oblige you in any way. Officer, arrest this woman. She refuses to let this man go. Well, why should she? It's against the law for a woman to detain a man on the street. It's a clear case of disorderly conduct. Countess, between ourselves... What are you holding him for, anyway? Well, Sergeant, I'm holding him because I want to hold him. <laughs> He's the first man I've ever really held, and I'm enjoying it. And I'm holding him because as long as I hold him, he's free. Pierre, I'm giving you fair warning. And I'm holding him because Irma wants me to hold him. She's in love with him. And if I let him go, it will break her heart. In that case, you must move along, Prospector. <laughs> You're blocking traffic. I have your number, Sergeant. Move along. You'll regret this, Pierre. You'll regret what you've done. Thank you, Countess. He's blackmailing you, isn't he, Roderick? Yes. Well, what did you do? <laughs> Murder someone? I forged my father's signature to a note. The Prospector has the paper and promised to tear it up if I did what he wanted. But I couldn't do it. Well, that man is mad. Does he really want to destroy the whole of Chaillot? He wants to destroy all of Paris. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? No, no, it's not funny, Countess. He can do it. He's mad, but he's powerful, and he has friends. Their machines are already drawn up and waiting. In three months' time, you may see Paris covered by a forest of derricks. Have they lost something? Oh, they're looking for oil, Countess. They're convinced that Paris is sitting on a lake of oil. Well, suppose it is. What harm does it do? Well, they, they, they want to bring the oil... Up to the surface, Countess. Well, I never heard of anything so silly. Now, what do they want with this oil? They want to make war, Countess. Uh. <laughs> oh, dear, let's forget about these horrible men. Oh, the world is beautiful. It's happy. That's how God made it. No man can change it. Ah, uh, Countess, if you only knew... If I only knew what? Shall we tell her now? What is it you're hiding from me? Uh... You tell her, Ragpicker. You've been a pitch man. You can talk. Our friend should be here. Uh, Ma! Yes? Uh, come here and tell Marshal to come with you and Dr. Jardin. Right away? At once. We're going to tell the Countess. Ma, you're, you're frightening me, my friend. What are you hiding from me? Countess. 
There was a time when old clothes were as good as new. In fact, they were better. Hmm? Because when people wore clothes, they gave something to them. You may not believe it, but right this minute, the highest price shops in Paris are selling clothes that were thrown away 30 years ago. They're selling them for new. That's how good they were. Well? Countess, there was a time when garbage was a pleasure. A garbage can then was not what it is now. If it smelled a little strange, it was because it was a little confused. <laughs> there was everything there. Mm -hmm. Sardines, cologne, iodine, roses. <laughs> An amateur might jump to the wrong conclusion. But to a professional, ah, it was the smell of God's plenty. <laughs> well, 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 well. Countess, the world has changed. Oh, nonsense. How could it change? But the people are the same, I hope. No, Countess, the people are not the same. The world is not beautiful anymore. It's not happy. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because you live in a dream, Countess, and we don't like to disturb you. But how could it have happened? Countess. There was a time when you could walk around Paris and all the people you met were just like yourself. A little cleaner, maybe, or dirtier, perhaps, or angry or smiling, but you knew them. They were you. Mm. Well, Countess, 20 years ago, one day on the street, I saw a face in the crowd. A face, you might say, without a face. The eyes, empty. The expression, not human. It saw me staring, and when it looked back at me with its gelatin eyes, I, I shuddered, because I knew that to make a room for this one, one of us must have left the earth. A while after, I saw another and another, and since I've seen hundreds come in, yes, thousands. Describe them to me. You've seen them yourself, Countess. Their clothes don't wrinkle. Their hats don't come off. And when they talk, they don't look at you. They don't perspire. Do they have wives? Do they have children? They buy models out of shop windows, furs and all. They animate them by a secret process and then they marry them. Naturally, they don't have children. What work do they do? They don't do any work. Whenever they meet, they whisk. And they pass each other a thousand franc notes. They don't do anything, but wherever you see them, things are not the same. <laughs> so now you know, Countess, why the world is no longer happy, why we are the last of the free people of the earth. Is this true, Roderick? I'm afraid it's true. Did you know about this, Irma? All I know is that the doorman says that faith is dead. I've even had to stop taking bets over the phone. Dr. Jardin. Haven't you noticed, Countess? The pigeons don't fly anymore. They can't afford to. They walk. Well, they're a pack of fools, and so are you. Well, you should have told me at once. Why are you complaining instead of doing something about it? How can you bear to live in a world where there's unhappiness? Are you cowards? Well, if these men are the cause of all the trouble, all we have to do is get rid of them. Well, how can we get rid of them? They're too strong. The sergeant will help us. <laughs> oh, we, we'll drive them all into a ditch. Oh, it's not that easy, Countess. They have all the power and all the money. And they're greedy for more. Ah, then, my friends, they're lost. If they're greedy, they're stupid. If they are greedy... Ah, I know exactly what to do. Have you any kerosene in the house, Irma? Kerosene, yes. Uh, I want just a little in a bottle with a little mud, hmm? And some mange cure, if you have it. I'll put some in a clean bottle for you. And uh, bring me a pencil, please, and some paper. Yes, Countess. Uh, Dr. Jardin, you go and find Madame Constance. Uh, yes, Countess. And ask her to be at my house by two o'clock. I'll be waiting for her in my cellar. You may tell her we have to discuss the future of humanity. Oh, that's sure to bring her. Uh, yes, Countess. And ask her to bring Madame Josephine and Mademoiselle Gabrielle with her. Do you know how to get in to speak to Madame Constance? Uh, no, Countess. Well, you knock twice and you meow three times. Do you know how to meow? I'm better at barking. Oh, you better practice meowing on the way. Here's the kerosene, uh, Countess, and the pencil and the paper. Now, write this letter for me. Hmm? Ready, Countess. Uh, my dear Mr... Uh, what's his name? They are all called Mr. President. My dear Mr. President, I have personally verified the existence of a spontaneous outcrop of oil 
in the cellar of number 21 Rue de Chaillot, which is at present occupied by a person of um, unstable mentality. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, this explains why, fortunately for us, the discovery has been so long kept secret. Now, if you should wish to verify the existence of this outcrop for yourself, you may call at the above address at 3 p.m. today. I am herewith enclosing a sample so that you may judge the quality and consistency of the crude. Yours very truly, uh, Roderick, can you sign the prospector's name? Ah, uh, you wish me to? Oh, one forgery wipes out the other. Who is to deliver this? The sergeant, of course, on his bicycle. And as soon as you've delivered it, sergeant, you run over to the prospector's office and leave word that the president expects to see him at my house at three. Yes, Countess. But this only takes care of two of them, Countess. Well, didn't I understand you to say that they're all connected like the works of a machine? That is true. Well, then if one comes, the rest will follow and we shall have them all. <laughs> Ah, well, now, now, I must go and make ready for them. Uh, Roderick, you shall take me home. Oh, yes, Countess. Oh, you still look pale. We have some old chartreuse at home. I always take a glass each year. Last year I forgot. You shall have it. Anything I can do to help you, Countess. Oh, well, there's a great deal you can do. <laughs> there are all the things that need to be done in a room that no man has been in for 20 years. You can untwist the blind and let in a little sunshine for a change, hmm? Oh, there's a door on the wardrobe. You can take it off and deliver me once and for all from the old harpy that looks at me out of the mirror. You can let the mouse out of the trap. I'm tired of feeding it. Now, each man to his post. Very well, Carter. See you uh, later, my friend. I yes, come here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, why are you standing there, Irma? I'm thinking of Roderick. I mean, Pierre. What are you thinking? I hate ugliness. I love beauty. I hate meanness. I adore kindness. It may not seem so grand to some to be a waitress in Paris. I love it. A waitress meets all sorts of people. She observes life. I hate to be alone. I love people. But I have never said I love you to any man. I have never said I love you to anyone in the world before, but I say it now. I love him. I love him. In a moment, act two of The Mad Woman of Shiloh, starring Eileen McMahon and Estelle Winwood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of The Mad Woman of Shile, starring Eileen McMahon and Estelle Winwood. And here again is John Chapman. It is now two in the afternoon, and in the cellar sitting room of her house, the Countess looks up as Irma appears at the doorway. Countess, here is the sewer man. Oh, you found him, Emma. Well, send him in. Countess. How do you do, Mr. Sewerman? Oh, but why do you have your boots in your hand instead of on your feet? Etiquette, Countess. Etiquette. Oh, how very American. I'm told that in America, people apologize for their gloves when they shake hands. <laughs> As if the human skin were nicer to touch than the skin of a sheep. And particularly when they have sweaty hands. My feet never sweat, Countess. Oh, how very nice. Oh, but please don't stand on ceremony here. Now put your boots on. Thanks, Countess. Oh, I'm sure you must have a very poor opinion of the upper world. The way people throw filth into your sewer is absolutely scandalous. I burn all my refuse and I scatter the ashes. All I ever throw in the drain is flowers. Uh, did you happen to see a lily float by this morning? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. A very sweet thought. Tomorrow you shall have this iris. Oh, but, but now, I have a question to ask. Yes, Countess. Do you remember that night I found you here in my cellar, looking very pale and strange? Well, you were half dead, as a matter of fact, and I brought you some brandy. I remember, Countess. That night, you promised to tell me the secret of this room. 
The secret of the moving stone. Yes. I need it now. Countess, there is a brick. There on the wall behind you. Hmm? It's a little darker than the others. This one? If you push it, the stone will move away. <gasps> Where do those stairs lead? Nowhere. They just go down. <laughs> Let's go see. No, 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 Countess. Never again. That time you found me, I had a pretty close shave. I kept going down and round and down and round for an hour. There's no end to it. Once you start, you can't stop. You came up. I'm a special case, and I stopped in time. Who could have built such a thing? Paris is old, you know. You don't suppose by any chance there's oil down there? There's only death down there. I should have preferred a little oil. How do you lower the stone? Just press on that same brick. <laughs> now, there's two in the world who know it. Countess, Madame Constance and Mademoiselle Gabrielle are here. Send them in, Irma, and show the sewer man to the door. Good day, Mr. Sewer Man. Thank you. Good day, Countess. Glad to be of service. Aurelia, here we are. Now, don't tell us they found your feather boa. You don't mean Adolphe Berto has proposed at last. Oh, how, how are, are you? you? How are you, Constance? Uh, how are you, Gabrielle? Thank you both so much for coming. You needn't shout today, my dear. It's Wednesday. Wednesdays are here perfectly. It's Thursday. Oh, you naughty dog. Stop barking. <laughs> what a racket you're making. Now, come along, come along, come along. Darling, we've come to see the longest board and the handsomest man in no, Paris. No, Constance, it's not a question of my boa today, nor of Adolphe Berto. It's a question of the future of the human race. You think it has a future? Oh, sit down and listen to me. Now, we've got to make a decision today which may alter the fate of the world. Couldn't we do it tomorrow? I want to wash my slippers. We haven't a moment to waste. Oh, where is Josephine? Josephine is sitting on her bench by the palace waiting for President Wilson to come out. She says she's sorry, but she must see him today. Oh, what a pity she had to see him today. She has a first-class brain. Well, go ahead, dear. We're listening. What is it? What is it, Dickie? Oh, you want to sit in Aunt Aurelia's lap. Well, stop. Come on, then. Jump. Jump, darling. Now, now, Constance, we love you dearly, as you know. And we love Dickie, too. But this is too serious a matter. So let's stop being childish for once. And what does that mean, if you please? It means Dickie. Now, you know perfectly well that we love him and we fuss over him just as if he were still alive. He's a secret memory. We wouldn't hurt his feelings for the world. But please, don't plump him in my lap when I'm settling the future of mankind. So you're against Dickie, too? I'm not in the least against Dickie. I adore Dickie. But you know as well as I that Dickie is only a convention with us. Well, it's a beautiful convention, but that doesn't mean it has to bark all the time. Besides, you spoil him. By the time you went to visit your niece and you left him with me, we got along famously together. When you're not there, he's a model dog. He doesn't bark, he doesn't tear things, he doesn't even eat. But with you around him, one really can't pay attention to anything else. Now, I'm not going to take Dickie in my lap at a solemn moment like this. Constance, dear, I don't mind taking him in my lap. He loves to sit in my lap, don't you, die? Kindly stop putting on angelic airs, Gabriel. I know you very well. You're much too sweet to be sincere. There are plenty of times that I make believe that Dickie is here when really I've left him at home and you cuddle and pet him just the same. I adore animals. If you adore animals, you shouldn't pet them when they're not there. It's a form of hypocrisy. Now, Constance, Gabriel has just as much right as you have to. Gabrielle has no right to do what she does. Do you know what she does? She invites people to come to tea with us. People whom we know nothing about. People who exist only in her imagination. And you think that's not an existence? I don't invite them at all. They come by themselves. What can I do? You might introduce us. Well, if you think they're imaginary, Constance, what do you want to meet them for? Well, of course they're imaginary, but who likes to have imaginary people staring at one, especially strangers? Oh, they're really very nice. But tell me one thing, Gabriel. Are they here now? Now, am I to be allowed to speak, or is this going to be the same as that argument about inoculating Josephine's cat? 
when we didn't get to the subject at all. Never, never, never. I'll never give my consent to that. I'll never do a thing like that to you, Dickie, oh, sweet. Oh, good heavens, now she's in tears. All right, all right, Constance, don't stop crying. I'll take him in my lap. No, he won't go now. Oh, how can you be so cruel? Don't you suppose I know Dickie isn't real? Don't you think I'd rather have him here alive and woolly and frisking around the way he used to? You have your Adolf, Gabriel has her birds, but I have only Dickie. Do you think I'd be so silly about him if it wasn't that it's only by pretending that he's here all the time that I can get him to come sometimes, really? Next time I won't bring him. Oh, now let's not get excited over nothing at all. I'll call Irma and she will take Dickie for a walk. No, he doesn't want to. Besides, I didn't bring him today, so there. Aurelia, why did you ask us here in the first <gasps> place? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, well, now, 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 this morning, thanks to a young man who drowned himself in the Seine, I discovered a terrible plot. There is a group of men who want to destroy the whole city. Is that all? I don't understand, Aurelia. Why should men want to destroy the city? It was they themselves who put it up. Why, well, there are people in the world who want to destroy everything. They have a fever of destruction. Even when they pretend that they're building, it's only in order to destroy. Humanity is now dedicated to the task of universal demolition. I speak, of course, primarily of the male sex. <gasps> oh! Aurelia, must you talk sex in front of Gabriel? Well, now, after all, there are two sexes. Gabriel is an innocent young girl. She can't be that innocent. She keeps canaries. I think you're being very cruel about men, Aurelia. Men are big and beautiful and as loyal as dogs. I prefer not to marry, it's true, but I hear excellent reports of them from friends who've had an opportunity to observe them closely. Oh, my poor darling, the tide has turned. Men are changing back into beasts. Well, a man doesn't take your hand nowadays. He gives you his paw. Oh, would that bother you very much if they changed into animals? Oh, I'd love to see them like that. They'd be sweet. Mm, you'd make a fine rabbit, Constance, wouldn't you? I? A rabbit? Well, naturally. You don't think it's only the men who are changing? No, no. You'd change along with them, husbands and wives together. We're all one race, you know. And why would my husband have to be a rabbit if he were alive? Remember his front teeth when he nibbled his celery? I remember. I am happy to say absolutely nothing about him. <laughs> all I remember <laughs> is that time Monsieur Le Courtier tried to kiss me in the park. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Of course, of course. What does that mean, if you please? Yes, yes, of course, of now, course. Now, Constance, just this once, look us in the eye and tell us truly. Did that really happen or did you read about it in a book? No, I'm being insulted. Now, now, we promise faithfully. We'll believe it all over again, won't we, Gabrielle? But just tell us the truth this once. How dare you question my memories? Suppose I said your pearls were false. They were. I'm not asking what they were. I'm asking what they are. Are they false? Or are they real? Why, everyone knows that when you wear pearls, little by little, they become real. Isn't it the same with memories? <laughs> no, no, no. Do not let us waste time. No, no, no. I must go on. But furthermore, I think Gabriel is perfectly right about men. There are still plenty of men who haven't changed a bit. Now, there's an old senator who bows to Gabriel every day when he passes her in front of the palace, and he takes off his hat each time. That's perfectly true, Aurelia. He's always pushing an empty baby carriage. He always stops and bows. No, don't be taken in, Gabriel. It's all make-believe. I warn you, Gabriel. Don't let this senator with the empty baby carriage pull the wool over your eyes. He's really the soul of courtesy. He seems very correct. Yes, those are the worst ones, Gabriel. Beware. He'll make you put on black riding boots while he dances the can, -can around you, singing Lord knows what filth at the top of his voice. You think that's what he has in mind? Why, of course. Men have lost all sense of decency. We live in the reign of the golden calf. Did you realize that, Gabriel? Men now publicly worship the golden calf. How awful! Have the authorities been notified? The authorities do it themselves, Gabriel. The world has gone out of its mind. Unless we do something, humanity is doomed. Well, I know what I always do in a case like this. Oh, yes. You write to the Prime Minister. He always does what I tell him. 
Does he ever answer your letters? He knows I prefer him not to. It might excite gossip. What do you suggest, Gabrielle? Now, how can she tell until she's consulted her voices? I'll go right home and consult them if you want, and we could meet again. No, 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 there's no time for that. And besides, in my opinion, your voices aren't real voices at all. How do you dare say a thing like that? Well, now, where do your voices come from? Still from your sewing machine? Not at all. They've passed into my hot water bottle, and it's much nicer that way. They don't chatter anymore. They gurgle. Well, I don't call that voices. Objects talk, everybody knows that. That's the principle of the phonograph. But to ask a hot water bottle for advice is silly. What does a hot water bottle know? No, my dear. All we have to consult here is our own good judgment. Well, tell us what you've decided. Since you're asking for our opinion, you've doubtless made up your mind. Yes, yes, I thought the whole thing through. I have, in fact, baited a trap. And in just a few minutes... The rats will be here. Oh, Heavens, oh. what are you going to do with oh, them? Oh, now that's just the question. Suppose I get all those wicked men here at once in my cellar. Have I the right to exterminate them? To kill them? It's not so easy to kill them. Now, let's say you have a tank full of burning oil all ready for them. Now, how are you going to get them to walk into it? There's nothing so stubborn as a man when you want him to do mm, something. You leave that to me. I wish Josephine were here. Her sister's husband was a lawyer. She knows all about those things. Do you ever miss a cold when it's gone? When the world feels well again, do you think it will regret its illness? No. It will stretch itself and smile. And that's all. Countess. Madame Josephine is here. Thank heaven. We're saved. My dear friend, today, once again, I waited and waited for President Wilson, but he didn't come out. Well, you'll have to wait quite a while longer before he does. He's been dead since 1924. I have plenty of time. Well, and anyone else, Josephine, these extravagances would seem childish. But a person of your good judgment doubtless has her reasons for wanting to talk to a man to whom no one would listen when he was alive. Now, we have a legal problem for you. Suppose you had all the world's criminals here in this room, and suppose you had a way of getting rid of them. Yes. Would you have the right to do it? Why not? <laughs> exactly my point. But, Josephine, so many people... The more there are, the more legal it is. That way it's impersonal. It's even military. It's the cardinal principle of battle. You get all your enemies in one place and you kill them all together at one time. Of course, if you had to track them down one by one in their houses and offices, you'd get tired and sooner or later you'd stop. Oh, I believe your idea is very practical, Aurelia. I can't imagine why we never thought of it before. Well, bless you, Josephine. I was certain you'd see it the way we do. Very well. Now, now that's settled and let's have our tea. Hmm? Uh, quickly, though, for they will be here shortly. <laughs> Emma? Emma, is she here? She's sleeping now, Pierre. It's her afternoon nap. Look, look what I found. Her feather boa. Where did you find it? I took the mirror off the wardrobe door. It was behind it. Oh, how happy this will make her. Take it in and put it where she'll see it when she wakes. All right. Oh, she'll be so pleased. It's been lost for five years. Is it you, Adolphe Berto? Ah, uh, no, madame. It's only Pierre. No, don't lie to me. Say that it's you. Ah, uh, yes, it's I. Would it cost you so much to call me Aurelia? It's I, Aurelia. Why did you leave me, Adolphe Berto? Was she so lovely, this Georgette of yours? You are a thousand times lovelier. Oh, she was clever then. She was stupid. When you looked into her eyes, you saw a vision of heaven, perhaps? I saw nothing. That's how men are. They love you because you're beautiful and clever and soulful. And they leave you for someone who is plain and stupid and soulless. But why, Adolfo? why? Why, Aurelia? Oh, I know she wasn't rich. Because when I saw you that time in the market and you snatched the only good melon from right under my nose, your cups. 
Yes, my poor friend. They were badly afraid. Yes, she was poor. It was on the way home from the theater when I first took your arm. Because it was windy and it was late. I have never set foot in that street again. I go the other way round. It's not easy in the winter when there's ice. One is quite apt to fall. And that I often do. Oh, my darling. Forgive me. No, never. I will never forgive you. All the time, I swear, no, Aurelia. I swear, I know. You gave her the same flowers. You bought her the same chocolate. No. I will never forgive you as long as I live. I have always loved you, Aurelia. Love? Then you are dead too, Adolfo? No. I love you. I shall always love you, Aurelia. Yes, I know that. That much I've always known. I knew that the moment you went away, Adolfo. And I knew that nothing could ever change. But I did want to hear you say it. Don't forget me, Aurelia. And now, farewell, Adolf Berton. Farewell. Let go my hand. Give it back to me, Pierre. Why not? Go now. Before I open my eyes. Oh. Countess. Oh, but Pierre, it, it's you. Has he gone? Uh, yes, Countess. Oh, I didn't hear him go. <laughs> he makes a quick exit, that one. Good heavens! My feather boa! Oh, wherever did you find it? In the wardrobe, Countess, when I took off the mirror. Is there a couple of shopping bag with it? Yes, Countess. And a little child showing box? Oh, no, Countess. Oh, they're fighting now. They're funding for their lives. You see what they're up to? They're quietly putting back all the things they've stolen. Now, the one thing I really miss is my little sewing box. You, you, you haven't put it back. You're quite sure. Uh, 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 what was it like? It's a green cardboard with gold braid all around it. No, it's not there, Arthur. The symbol was guilt. I swore I'd never use any of it. Look at my poor finger. Well, if you were right, there's a procession outside. Then the streets are full of taxis and limousines. I will receive them alone. Yes. You and Irma going to bring all our phones here. Now, wait, yes. Rest that black and brick in the wall. Ah, uh, uh, this one, Calvin? Yes, press it quickly. <laughs> Where do those stairs go? Never mind, Cal. Hurry on, now they'll be here. Go and find your friends, all of them, and bring them here. Oh, oh yes, and I, I mustn't forget that I'm supposed to be dead. Hmm? I want to hear what they're thinking. I'll tell them. Go now, Irma. Run along, Pierre. Uh, yes, Mother. President and the prospector and Baron, well, you're very welcome. You are expected. This is my board of directors, madam. How does this quite deaf gentleman you will have to be? I had a premonition, madam, when I saw you this morning that we would meet again. Now, that the old chuck. I have here a letter, madam. Is it true that you located the Oh, Yes, that is true. Then sign the paper, please. Oh, what is it? Your contract. Oh, thank you. Certainly not. It's a waiver. Right. All right. Now, madam, just show us the will, and this package is yours. What is it? A gold brick. Twenty-four carats. For you. Now, madam, you show us the way to the oil, if you please. Down that stairway. Uh, uh, but, but, but wait, wait. Yes? Did any of you gentlemen happen to bring along a little stone box? I just saw them here. Or a little stone? Not me. No, me, no. May we go down now? Well, may go down now. What? Your step, sir. I'll cut a deal. Right, madam? Yeah. I'm fine, gentlemen, Walker. 